the Navy Midshipman. Now, last year was not good, and that comes off a not good 2020 season. But uh, but we will move on down to them. They went four and eight last year. Ken Niamatalola. Uh, la- I will tell you this: their post game win expectancy last year seven point oh five and four point nine five. So basically, they should have been a seven and five football team, and they went four and eight. Like they did yeah, get the big win over Army at the end of the year, so that was good. Uh, but that got them to to four wins. They had some pretty big losses. Uh, the linebacker, and I'm hoping I say this name right, Diego Fago. I hope that's right. Um, I got no idea. He he was the leader of that defense. Uh, defense was pretty good last year. Number 74 in PPA per drive. Um, let's talk about the offense. Offense was just bad all around. They were number 105 in PPA per drive. Uh, they seemed to perform better in spots when they had the quarterback, Ty Lavatai, in there. Uh, he took over in the fourth game, and in that fourth game, they beat UCF. Now, most of his supporting cast are gone. Harris, AC, all those guys. Maybe new starters can provide more upside, even without the experience. Because they're they're number 103 in returning production this year. Um, you can never look at their roster strength. And, yes. and it's the same with any of the academies, right? Uh, That's right. But compared to Army and Air Force, etc., Navy is number 131 on roster strength on offense and defense. Like, they are dead last in the entire country as far as talent goes. Now, again, you can't really look at it that way. Um, they do have some, you know, some big players coming back. Uh, Isaac Ruos, the fullback, safety John Marshall, defensive end Jacob Busick, uh, and then, of course, the quarterback I mentioned, Lavate, uh, or Lavatai, excuse me. Um, I, I'm worried about the offense because I don't know. Like, it's not like people have really figured out the triple. Right, you see, Army and Air Force have success with it every year, but but Navy, for whatever reason, was really bad. Um, as far as the defense, they've been overperforming. <coughs> excuse me. Um, under the new defense coordinator Newberry, for like three years now, like they always do this. Uh, you know, I don't know if if number seventy four in defensive PPA per drive is going to cut it if your offense isn't scoring. Um. They really need the offense to to hold on to the ball and score points this year, uh, because they you know they're number one twelve in returning production on defense. Uh, this team, you remember they went eleven and two in twenty nineteen. Like yeah, they, but that was just a long time ago, man. Well, they they have since gone seven and fifteen since that season. Yeah, um, I mean they that, were, that 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 feels like it was a, a whole lifetime ago. If you look at what uh, what their offense was. And again, they have not changed. They had Malcolm Perry at quarterback in 2019. Um, they have not had him, and they hadn't been able to find anything close to that. And they haven't really changed what they're doing, but they were number 18 in offensive SP+. Plus. That's uh, an efficiency rating from Bill Conley. They were number 18 in 2019. They were number 115 last year. In two years, that's how big of a difference it is between that quarterback and what they had last year. Uh, keys for the season, I've got let Lava tie loose. Uh, hope the new faces perform better than uh, all the experience that was actually lost. I said on defense, watch for the safety, John Marshall. Uh, he could be a stud in the secondary. Develop the linebackers. You've only got one senior. And the defensive line, you've got three juniors and two seniors. But you, you don't have a ton of returning experience with those guys. So uh, while they've been around the program, they hadn't played a lot. So you need them to step up. Uh, I've got, there's no reason to assume that they'll remember how to score points here, and if the defense doesn't make a great stride, it could be a really long year. And Chris, I got them at 4-8. and eight. Like, I, I want them four to be eight. better, but I I just don't, I can't find it. No, 4-8, four, four and 4-8, eight, and, eight, and that was, you know, maybe they can beat Army twice. <laughs> I've got them losing to Army. My four wins here, I've got Temple, Tulsa, Memphis, and Delaware. But I... I could see them beating anybody, and I could see them losing to anybody. Like, that's, that's what's crazy about it. I can't see them beating anybody. That's crazy. They can't be <laughs> well, I mean, they were right there with Cincinnati last year. They were right there with Houston. Like, they they were in some ball games. Again, their postgame win expectancy last year had them as a 7-5 and five team. Uh, but they, they went 4-8. and eight. Like, they won three conference games last year. Like, this year, you know, you got Army and you got Air Force. 
Uh, you got Notre Dame. Like I don't think you're I don't think you're gonna win a lot of these non conference games. I mean, it's just rough. Just rough at SMU, uh, at Cincy, at UCF, at Air Force, at East Carolina. I mean, it it's tough. It's just a tough schedule. So I uh, I think four and eight is is just about right. You you tend to agree with that, right? Yep, that's what I got him at. Four and eight. You think they'll fire Neil Matalolo if, if he doesn't make a bowl game this year? I don't think so. Who can get the coach at? I mean, that's a good point. I don't know. I mean, he went. He went. You know, he went ten to two one year. What are you going to do with that? Like, really? That's Nobody's a, done that in twenty years, thirty years. Like, what? that's true. And now you, you got to deal with you got you to live on that. You got to live on that the rest of your life. <laughs> I do wonder if it's a good idea for them to be in a conference at this point. Like army feasts on on playing Colgate and stuff like that. Like I do wonder. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B Giannini at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.